If you can save 1,000 ringgit every month, where should you invest this money? If you're like me, you don't have a lump sum amount that fall on your lap and right now you can start investing with a huge amount. Likely, you will need to accumulate your wealth and save up every month. So in this period, how can you invest this money every month? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. This is not a financial advice. All we provide here is just education and entertainment. So if you want to make any investment decision, do speak to your financial advisor before you do so. If you get a trick, let us move on. Actually, I just wanted to show you my new pants. As you know, life as a startup entrepreneur can be quite demanding. I need a pair that gives me that extra flexibility to do all that. On top of that flexibility, these pants is also moisture wicking. Oi! Moisture wicking, lah, not waterproof! Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. <sighs> moisture wicking, it means it removes and dries sweat from the skin rapidly, not waterproof. You know those awkward sweat patches that you get? Yeah, you don't have to worry about that with bottom flap. And it's made from ultra breathable fabric that doesn't trap heat. So, even when it's such a hot weather out there, <laughs> it feels like aircon down there. I love it so much, I even have another pair, but in shorts for a more casual day. Now, if you're a busy entrepreneur like me, you gotta get yourself a pair of bottom laps. Bottom slaps. Bo bottoms laps. Bottoms laps. Lap. Hey, whatever lah, this pair of pants. Bottom slap. Use our link in the description and get a 10% discount off your purchase. Before we talk about the things that you can start investing in, one of the things that you have to remember is to diversify your investment. You know what they say? Never put all your eggs into one basket. There are many ways that you can diversify your investment. It all depends on your personal financial goal and your risk appetite. At the end of the day, it's best that you speak to a financial advisor and make the right decision for yourself. However, in this video, I would suggest this one thing. Keep at least 20% of the amount that you're going to be investing in the form of cash or either liquid investment. It means things that can be liquidated and can be turned into cash in the shortest period of time without losing money. Because these serve as a cash reserve that allow you to seize opportunity. For example, when the market is down, then you can take this cash reserve to further invest and average down your portfolio value. On the other hand, if there's some new investment opportunity that arise, you can also take this cash reserve to invest in it. So yes, the point is never invest 100 percent of your money every time make sure you keep some cash so let's start by talking about liquid and low risk kind of investment that you can use as a cash reserve number one stash away simple stash away simple basically is a robo advisor that takes your money and invests in money market fund for those of you who do not understand what's money market fund here is an overview basically money market fund is an investment that invests in low risk lending they call it repo this low risk lending is usually very secure as the lending usually in between banks and the chances of it going default is very very low so very often big corporations and high net worth individuals tend to use money market fund as an alternative to fixed deposit. If you want to learn more about money market fund, you can refer to this video here. So why you stash away simple? Well, simple. It's low risk. It is easy to open an account with them. All you need to do is just download the app, go through the KYC. Once it's approved, you can just transfer your money and then you can earn potentially 2.4% annual return per year. And the best part is there's no minimal amount. The second investment that you can use is ASB or ASM. For those of you who do not know what ASB or ASM, here is an overview. It is basically a government unit trust fund. Just like any other unit trust fund in the market, the only difference is it's owned by our government. But one thing special about ASB and ASM is this. It is a fixed price unit trust. This means the price per unit is always one ringgit. This makes it a suitable investment if you want to have a liquid cash investment. Because even if you withdraw in a short period, you will still get back one ringgit per unit. Because the price doesn't fluctuate. So this is is a low risk investment because if you put in 1000 ringgit it will remain as 1000 ringgit so what is the potential return of ASB or ASM anyone who live in Malaysia who have a little bit more financial literacy will know that ASB or ASM would give one of the best returns relative to all the safe investment out there which is around 5 to 7 percent dividend return every year this is actually pretty good compared to all the other low risk 
investment out there. And that is why many people, especially non-Bumi, like to get their hands on ASM whenever they got the chance to, as there's always limited unit for non-Bumi. But for our fellow Bumi Malaysians, don't worry, there is always a quota reserved for you. Just walk into the nearby post office or any ASB agent, you will be able to purchase some ASB for yourself. Also, what makes ASB really interesting is the fact that you can use ASB financing, which means that you can take a loan from bank and use that money to invest in ASB. Naturally, the interest from the loan is usually lower than the returns that ASB can provide, therefore allowing you to earn some extra money. Another benefit of ASB financing is that it allows you to access to a larger capital, therefore giving you a better dividend payout by year end. Imagine if you save 1,000 ringgit a month into ASB without using ASB financing, by the end of the year, your capital is only 12,000 ringgit. But if you use ASB financing and you take a loan of 200,000, by the end of the year, you will get a dividend payout of 5% of 200,000 ringgit, which is a lot more compared to the 12,000 ringgit. Lastly, the minimum amount that you can start investing in ASB or ASM, 1 ringgit. Now, definitely ASB financing may not be for everyone. So please speak to your financial advisor or an ASB consultant to find out if you're suitable for it. These are the two lower risk options that you can use when you want to invest your money every month. There are other options out there, but I think these two are the ones that are worth mentioning. The next part we're going to talk about are investment with higher risk. This means that when you invest in them, you need time to ride out the volatility of this investment asset. So if you have a longer time horizon for investment, these are the assets that will be great for you. The first asset I want to talk about is cryptocurrency. Why? Because it's the hottest asset right now that everyone talks about. Cryptocurrency is a decentralized currency. It started off as something that a group of people believe in until it became a wider adoption and today even big corporates are investing in it. And now we are talking about regulation and if it goes through, if policies were to kick in and make it a point to invest in cryptocurrency, this will be one exciting thing for the cryptocurrency world. If you want to find out more, you can check out Kevin O'Leary's speech during the Bitcoin conference in 2022. If you are someone who believes in the value of cryptocurrency and you believe that it is too big to fail today and eventually it will be something that is mainstream in institutions, then perhaps it's the best time that you start considering investing in cryptocurrency. Now, if you're first time investing in it, I would suggest you to look at big cap cryptos such as Bitcoin or Ethereum as the chances of failing is much less compared to other small cap coins. As for the potential return for cryptocurrency, well, it can go to the moon super high or it can become nothing. So the risk is, needless to say, high. Therefore, it is important that you are able to withstand the ups and downs of the price movement. If you can't take a price movement of negative 20% or negative 50%, I would suggest you to stay away or only invest very little of your money in it. As for minimum investment, well, this really depends on the coin. You can start investing with just 10 USD or 50 USD. There is no actual minimum, but you must have enough to be able to pay for the transaction fee. So personally, I would suggest you to start investing with 50 USD at least every month. And before you start investing in crypto, I do seriously recommend you to check out this video here. The second way of investing is to use decentralized finance. Yes, it is part of the extension of cryptocurrency. The idea of decentralized finance is that it works like a bank but without a single person who controls it. This also means that there's no one to scheme the profits. So, more profits to you. For example, I've been using KickDefy and Celsius to earn cash flow every day and every week while I hodl those coins that I believe in. And I would say that I'm quite satisfied with my returns so far. Talking about potential returns of DeFi, it ranges from anywhere in between 5% per annum up to 100% per annum, sometimes even more. Today, there are many DeFi platforms out there that offer you return for depositing your cryptocurrency with them. But please be careful and always check out review before you invest in them because sometimes it can be a scam. As for the minimum amount to begin, it really depends on the platform. But generally, I would say at least begin with 10 USD. The third investment you can consider is Stash Away. Stash Away is basically a robo-advisor that pulls your money together and then invests into selected ETFs in the market. ETF is basically a basket of stocks that tracks the index fund, such as the S&P 500. To open an account with Stash Away, all you need to do is download the app, go through the KYC, and once it's approved, voila, 
you can just transfer your money and begin building your portfolio there. Generally, there are four ways for you to build an investment portfolio. First, general investing, where you can choose a portfolio according to your risk level. Next, responsible investing, where you get to balance purpose and profit by investing in ethical business with ESG record. This is especially suitable for those of you who are especially aware about ESG concerns. Third, thematic investing. This allows you to diversify your investment plan by investing in trends that you believe in, such as environment and clean tech, technology enablers, consumer tech and healthcare. Using this thematic portfolio, it allows you to tweak the areas that you can invest in to ride on trends. Lastly, there's goal-based investing. This is where Stash Away will provide you with different set of goals and you can use this goal to build your plan, such as planning for retirement, buying a home, budget for wedding, and so on. Personally, I find one of the most suitable way to invest in Stash Away is by using the method of dollar cost averaging, which perfectly fits into the topic of this video. And that's why I recommend them. On the other hand, Stash Away is suitable for those of you who seek for foreign investment exposure. This is because the ETFs that are inside Stash Away's portfolio are mostly invested in overseas stocks such as US, Europe, and so on. In terms of potential, Potential return for Stash Away, I would say it's anywhere in between 2% to 20%, just like the normal stock market. But do take note of this when you start investing in Stash Away. Many people will complain that in the first six months to one year, they may not see the kind of return that they expect to. I have to let you know that that is normal because number one, you are doing dollar cost averaging, and number two, it takes time to show the return. So be patient when you're investing. As for the minimum amount to begin when investing in Stash Away, there's no minimum amount to start investing with Stash Away. So begin with whatever amount that you're comfortable with. The last item on the list is Unit Trust. Unit Trust is basically a pool investment vehicle where you entrust your money with a group of professionals and they will pick and select individual stocks to invest for you. Sounds similar to Stash Away, right? Now, the difference is Stash Away will take your money and invest in ETFs, but Unit Trust will take this money and invest in individual stocks. There are many, many different investments funds in the market that you can choose from. In order to choose the right unit trust fund for you, you need to learn how to read a fund fact sheet. Generally, when you read the title of the unit trust, it would give you a hint of what is it invested in. For example, the East Spring Investment Small Cap Fund. Basically, it's quite obvious, right? It is invested in potentially high growth small cap stocks. So by learning how to interpret the title and also read the fund fact sheet, it will give you an idea of what kind of fund you want to invest in and which fund is suitable to your risk appetite and your financial goal. Personally, over the years, I find many people investing in unit trust fund without even reading the fund fact sheet. And end of the day, after a few years, they don't see the investment giving them the kind of return that they want. So I can't stress it enough, do learn how to read a fund fact sheet. The potential return of unit trust can vary. It can range in between 1-2% all the way up to 30 over percent or 50%. Naturally, small cap stocks and tech stocks tend to experience higher growth. But on the flip side, there is also a higher chance that you will see a negative. So do make sure that you have the ability and risk appetite to ride on to the volatility of the market. As for the minimal investment, usually for unit trust, you need a minimal 1,000 ringgit initial investment and then on a monthly basis, at least 300 ringgit to continuously invest in a particular fund. So these are the six different investments that you can use to invest your money every month. At the end of the day, investing comes down to your own personal choice. All you need to do is find a particular investment that's suitable to your investment appetite and then stick on to it. But before that, definitely you need to learn about what you're investing in. Don't invest blindly. And lastly, always remember this. Do not invest 100% of your money. Always make sure you have a portion of cash reserve. If there are any other investment tools that you find it really interesting and you want us to talk about, do write down in the comment below. 